Hey guys, this is Jim K and 4YCD and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. So I dropped a short video about this yesterday and today we're going to talk about this. This is an ATU 100 tuner. This is based on an open source design available on the internet. I bought this particular unit from Banggood. I will put a link in the description below where you can get this. This was $35 on Banggood and came with this. Uh, funny story, there's a couple different variations of this on Banggood. For $35, this is what you get. There's also an option where you get a case and everything else, and you can put it all together. And I believe there's also a completely assembled option. So if you decide to purchase this from Banggood, look around and make sure you know what you're buying. I think it's also available on Amazon as well. So, and I buy stuff from Banggood, not all the time, but I do. And other than taking a while to get here from China directly, I haven't had any problem with Banggood. So your mileage may vary. So this tuner <coughs> runs on uh, 10 to 15 volts, according to the documentation that I found. And I will put a link to the documentation um, also in the description below. Um, and other people have done videos on this as well. Tony Albus has done one and a couple other people. I can't remember who all. This particular tuner is rated for 100 watts. So short of that, there's not much to see. We have all the things we'd expect to see with the tuner. Our different inductors. Uh, these here, these two doubles, that's four inductors, five, six, seven, eight, and nine different inductors on this. And then, of course, the relays to switch our capacitance and inductance values to get a good tune on the antenna. Model that I, the particular model that I bought came with a screen and this is a little screen, what is that, I don't know, one inch, inch and a quarter by half inch, something like that. Uh, this is an I2C serial bus that this screen uses. So any I squared C bus will work. Um, the wiring is the same for any of them and I'm gonna go over that here right now. On the particular tuner, you can see here we have some markings. So we have, uh, here is our power input. This is a switch, a single button that the tuner can be used to change a couple of modes. There are additional ones that um, do not come set up for the specific tuner, but you can find the information about that online. And here's the pins for the I squared C bus. So we have a clock pin, a data pin, a ground, and our voltage, and then this particular pin, which I have no documentation on, so I'm not entirely sure what MCLR um, stands for. I haven't been able to suss that one out yet. Those four pins, VCC, ground, data, and clock, are I squared C standards. So like I said, any I squared C um, screen that, that runs on that serial standard will work just fine. The particular screen that they sent me, um, and it came with uh, jumper wires, it's DuPont style wires. Let me see if I can get this thing arranged where we can see, there we go. So the pins are marked here, and we have ground, VCC, clock, and data. Those are the four lines that we need to run an I, I squared C serial bus. The tuner as I have it here, has two different modes that you can flip between. So you can do a reset, which is a long press of, I didn't show you that, right here, a long press of the B line, bringing it to ground, will do a complete reset and the tuner will then be ready to tune starting over. <clears throat> a short press forces it into tune mode um, where it will tune the next time you key up and send RF. So they kind of do the same thing um, one of them, you know, I guess would be a full reset, and then the, the secondary one is just kind of a touch-up tune kind of thing. Um, either way, it, it will sense the RF, and it will do the tune. Okay, sorry about the jump cut. The camera battery decided to die. Down here, we have the two uh, antenna connectors. These are SMA type, <clears throat> so you'll have to use adapters to get to uh, SO slash PL239 size or N connector, whatever you're using. This is for HF. Uh, there are different models of this, and I'm not entirely sure which model this is, so this may or may not tune all the way up to 6 meters. Um, it will tune up to 30 megahertz. 
So you can get 10 meters and 11 meters on this as a tuner. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and hook this up to my antenna. I've got a random wire on a 9 to 1 ballon uh, strung up outside, and we're going to use that to test with because you'll need the tuner with a random wire. So we have a IC706 and a battery and all of the associated accoutrement, and I'm going to wire that up, and we'll be back, and we'll play with tuning this thing and see how it works. Okay, I've turned off the overhead light and I've got a lamp on this so we can kind of see the screen and it does, doesn't reflect because otherwise the overhead just makes this thing glow. Now, I will tell you that while it looks like it's flickering on the screen, the display is fine here. Tuner is hooked up and based on my understanding of this particular device, the little dot here at the end after power indicates that it's in auto-tune mode so it should try to tune as soon as we key up the radio. It also requires a minimum of about 20 watts for tuning functionality. So on the 706, uh, once I hit the right button, we're going to see we have our power level set to 6, and I'm on AM so I can send a carrier. All right, so as I send a carrier, hopefully you can hear it clicking, and it says that we are tuned up on 28.325 with an SWR of 1.19. I wish the display wasn't flickering, but I can't fix that. I also wish that it would keep the last readings up there. It does show our capacitance and inductance um, for the current tune situation. So now if I change bands on the radio and go down to 21, or 12 rather, you can see it's tuning again. And the way this device works is it will auto-tune when that little dot is showing like it is. That it will auto-tune if the SWR is good and it determines good to be below uh, 3 SWR. So once it gets to below 3, it will stop the auto-tune cycle. Now if I want to reset this, what I have to do is ground out this particular jumper over here which is very hard to see on camera because of where everything's set. So I'm going to do the grounding now and reset it. So now that forced it to lose its tune and it should start auto-tuning as soon as I key up. And we're pretty close on this antenna already. And it shows our effectiveness on key down of 99%, our output power is 25 watts and our input power is 24 to 26 watts so it's doing the it's doing the needful right uh, now i'm tuning on am a better way would be cw but i don't have a key hooked up and all that and it would also auto tune obviously if you keyed up and spoke into the mic so let me change modes over to sideband and let's go back to 10 meters and change it where we can Turn the VFO. Now let's see if we can pick up any traffic. Yours at Kilo Charlie 3, Lima Mike Victor. Kilo November 4, Yankee Charlie Delta. Kilo November 4, Yankee Charlie Delta. Did I get that right? QSL, QSL, you're coming in Alabama about a 5-7. Okay, so we got a quick QSO in there, and that seems to be working just fine. It's interesting that this keeps tuning while I'm talking. Um, on the AM signal, it just stayed steady. Of course, on AM, it's a carrier. On sideband, we're using the side lobe of the signal and not the primary carrier. Your power does fluctuate as you're talking. Um, it's interesting that the tuner keeps fluctuating. And I'm Jim, KN4YCD. Thank you for stopping by. If you would, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel below and ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post any new content. 73, folks.